Hello street snappers and welcome to another street photography video. Someone asked me recently if I'm a YouTuber or a photographer, which I thought was a pretty strange question, but it did make me think. And the answer is most definitely the latter. I'm a photographer who makes a few YouTube videos. I'm not a professional YouTuber who does a bit of photography. And I've been a photographer uh, for, for most of my life. And what I'm trying to do with this series of street photography videos is put some of that experience to good use. If you haven't come across me before, I'm a pro street photographer and photojournalist. I don't do weddings or landscapes or any of that stuff, just street and documentary photography. So that's enough about me. Let's get into this subject of confrontation. So, confrontation. It happens to us all from time to time, and it kind of goes with the territory of being a street photographer. But confrontation is maybe a strong word, and for me, nine times out of ten, when somebody questions what I'm doing, I'd say it's more of an engagement than a confrontation. Like these two, who spotted me taking a picture. They shrugged, they smiled. There was a little engagement, maybe a bit of a smile, but certainly no confrontation and no problem. But I'm going to explain how I deal with engagement or confrontation on the streets. As always, I try to get across in these videos that there's no right or wrong approach. All I'm aiming to do is explain what works for me. And this has worked for me for a long time. So, let's say you've just taken someone's picture in the street. Just put yourself in their shoes for a moment. One of three things will happen. Firstly, your subject is so self-absorbed, as many people are in big cities, that they won't even notice what's happening. Either that, or they'll completely ignore it. And there, there's a good tip for you. Shoot people who are distracted or involved in something they're doing. They're far less likely to notice you, and therefore there's a much slimmer chance of any confrontation. So that's an easy one to deal with. There's no engagement. The second scenario is that they see you taking the picture, they maybe catch your eye, they may raise an inquisitive eyebrow, but that's all, and they really just ignore it. The third scenario is they're really quite curious. Why me? Why is he taking a picture of me? I'm just an ordinary guy. Again, this is unlikely to cause any kind of problem for you. The person's curious. Another scenario, and this is the, the one that really concerns us more, is that they're not pleased with you and they'll confront you. So let's look, at, let's look at how we deal with each of those scenarios. And uh, the final situation we should talk about is when you're confronted by a security guard. So we'll come on to that a little later. So let's look at this first situation where you're, you're unnoticed. And this is the easiest scenario to consider. And if you've watched some of my other street photography videos, you'll know that I believe that, that good street photographers work quickly and quietly, quite stealthily, blending into their surroundings and are generally unseen. We carry minimal gear and we look more like tourists than photographers. We're no threat to anyone. And that's not usually going to lead to confrontations. Then there's a the curious guy who sees you taking the picture and he's thinking, why me? He's unlikely to be angry, just puzzled. And for, for most people out there, it's quite unusual that a complete stranger wants to take their picture and they probably just want to know why. A lot of people have never heard of street photography. They don't really understand what we're doing. And we've got to remember that this engagement is usually out of curiosity and not anger. They might say, did you just take my picture? Or why did you take my picture? My way of dealing with this is to smile, to thank them, and then walk away. This is usually enough to show that you're a, a decent human being. And it's as simple as that. Thanks. And then you're gone. It shows that you mean them no harm. And a smile is always quite disarming. So nine times out of ten, that's the end of the matter. That works. Thank them, smile, and walk off. But sometimes that person will come back to you and they'll say, oh, hang on a minute, why did you take my picture? Or did you just take my picture? And for this, you need your plan B response. Remember to stay relaxed, keep smiling, try not to look hard done by or defensive and have open positive body language. 
And at this point, it's crucial to remember that you're not doing anything wrong by taking somebody's picture. Okay, so why did you take my picture? This is where your script comes in. And we, we should all have a script. Not to be read out to someone in a kind of robotic way, but it's simply a statement that you're comfortable with that explains what you're doing and why you're doing it. And you have to develop something that works for you. There is no one size fits all. So for example, I might say to somebody, well, actually it's a fairly wide lens and it was a picture of a street scene. You were in it, but it wasn't of you. Or you could explain that you're doing a documentary project about normal everyday life in Mayfair or wherever you are. Uh, or you could say something like you're a student of street photography and you're working on an assignment to take pictures of street life. Just find something that works for you that you're comfortable with. Learn it and stick to it and you'll probably find that it works. But what if someone is clearly irritated or angry? In my experience this is quite rare but it does sometimes happen so we need to know how we're going to deal with it. The first thing to remember is to stay calm and remain friendly. Don't respond to hostility with hostility. You need to de-escalate the situation and you should be aiming to reassure them that, that you're, you're a good guy, you're a nice person. Again, smiling is good, but don't be too glib or uh, appear, appear to be trying to trivialise trivialize the situation. A smile usually brings the temperature down a little. You may want to explain why you've taken the picture and if it feels appropriate, maybe offer to show it to them. I try not to do this too often unless I'm really pushed into a corner and feel, feel that I need to. But show that you're taking their concerns seriously and if they insist you delete the picture, it's sometimes best to delete it. Though personally, I would see this as a, as a last resort, but you've got, to deal what feels, you've got to do what feels comfortable for you. And when you do delete the picture, that's probably the end of the matter. And in my experience, people don't usually get physical uh, especially, if you, especially if you've deleted the picture. And I think that's probably only ever happened to me once or twice. But there are times when people make it clear that they don't want their picture taken. And it's usually best to avoid them, or, may, or maybe not, as we can see in this picture. Uh, or here, this guy said afterwards, don't take my picture. And my response was something like, well, if you're dressed like that, people are probably going to want to take your picture. And he, he was never going to be a threat to me. So I was, I, I just took it. There's nothing we can do about these sort of confrontations. They do sometimes happen out of the blue, but thankfully they are very rare. And it's like falling off your bike as a child. The first thing you've got to do is to get back on that bike and carry on riding. And please don't let these experiences put you off street photography. They really are few and far between and rare occurrences. So then there's the, the, the confrontation with a security guard. And we need to make the distinction here first between public and private property. If you're shooting in a private space, such as a shopping center or a railway station, there's probably a good chance that photography is not allowed. In which case, a security guard might, might ask you to, to stop shooting or to leave. And that's fine. Their property, their rules. But what if you're shooting on the street and a security guard challenges you? This is a different matter. If you're shooting in a public place, such as a street, you can do whatever you like and the law is on your side. And just remember this. If I can see it, I can shoot it. And that's really all you need to know. And this applies in most countries if you're in public. Sometimes this security guard that we encounter is really nice and friendly. And in this case, I'll try to explain the law to him in a friendly way, just try to put him right with a smile on my face. But I will stand my ground and I won't be bullied into stopping shooting. If the guard's hostile or some way unpleasant, then I'll explain my rights maybe a little more persuasively. And if he wants to call the police on me, then I'll be quite happy to stick around and wait for them because I know exactly what they're going to say. Take this picture, for example. I was standing in the street taking the shot. Although the building in the background is a private building, it's the cabinet office in Whitehall in London. A security guard told me I couldn't take the picture. I was standing in the street, but the policeman who was standing opposite just smiled and said, it's no problem, you carry on.
But this video isn't really about the legal aspects of street photography because there's so much more that needs to be said about that and I will make one about the legal stuff soon. So that's generally how I respond to these engagements on the street. But there are more things you can do and here are a, a few more tips for you. Firstly, try to avoid people you think may react badly. Quite often, there's no knowing how people react, but sometimes you just get a, a sort of negative vibe from, vibe from some people. And something inside you says, no, don't take his picture. And in that case, if you've got any concerns or you're worried about a confrontation, just forget it and move on to something else. Life's too short. Another scenario is once you've engaged with somebody and let's say it turns out to be a fairly positive engagement, you could then make the most of the situation and turn it into a street portrait. So this is a, a posed rather than a candid picture of somebody on the street. And I know some people will say this is not street photography, but I think it is just about, although it is right out there in the margins of what most of us understand to be street photography. And if you want to find out the, the, the how and why of doing street portraits, I'll pop a link up here to an earlier video I did on that very subject. So here are a couple of examples of before and after the engagement, situations that I've turned into a street portrait. I spotted this woman in her, her great outfit in Trafalgar Square and I rattled off a few candid frames. Then she caught my eye and that kind of broke the, the candid spell. She sort of half smiled, so I, I thought, well, I may as well ask her for a portrait. And then she was quite happy to pose for me for, for a few minutes. Here's another one. Just as I was taking her picture, she saw me. So I said straight away, great hat, can I take a portrait of you? She said, yeah, no problem. And I spent five minutes with her, got quite a few pictures, and I ended up with what I thought was quite a nice street portrait. Uh, what else can you do? I would recommend to any street photographer that you get some little cards made. And these little business cards give you that little bit of authority and legitimacy as a photographer. And they'll show people that you're serious about your art, not just some weirdo or chancer with a camera. Finally, practice. Practice, 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 and then practice some more. The more engagements you have on the streets, the more confident and natural you'll be in responding to them, particularly the more negative ones. And do think of, of these interactions as engagements and not confrontations, and that alone will make you feel just a little bit easier about them. Well, I hope that was useful. Please don't let any negative encounters put you off street photography because they occasionally do happen, but they nearly always amount to nothing. So there we go. Thanks as always for supporting my channel and I'll be bringing you another street photography video very soon. Bye for now.